So our guest today is Professor Jonathan Adler from Case Western Reserve University School of Law. Professor Adler, thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. So when people think of free markets, they typically don't think of environmental issues, and they typically think that somehow if you're a pro-market, you, you must be against the environment. Could you explain how free market principles and property rights principles can actually help support and defend our environment? Certainly. Well, markets are very good at satisfying people's preferences. And if people have a preference for greater environmental protection, for conservation of the world around them, markets should be able to help deliver uh, that, those goods and those services, those amenities to people that want them. Further, markets create tremendous pressure to use resources more efficiently. And using resources more efficiently, making more with less, certainly has tremendous environmental benefits. When we transitioned from using, say, copper wire for communication to fiber optics, uh, that was driven by people's desire to make money and to make a profit. But the environmental benefits of that transition was re were remarkable. And similarly, going from fiber optics to wireless, not needing physical material as the medium for communication at all, had still more environmental benefits. And, and those constant pressures uh, have tremendous environmental value. I know for some people it seems counterintuitive, but how do property rights and ownership actually enhance our ability to take better care and be better stewards of our resources? Well, it's hard to be a steward of something that you don't own or have control over. Uh, we've known for centuries that if you care about a resource, you need to be able to control or limit the use of that resource to make sure it's not overused. Property rights are the most effective way we've ever found of doing that. Uh, when Garrett Hardin wrote his famous 1968 article on the tragedy of the commons, he pointed out that when it came to land, when it came to agriculture, we didn't have to worry about the commons problem because the institution of private property had taken care of it. What he pointed out was that there was a challenge in figuring out how to apply property rights in other circumstances. He was pessimistic that we could learn how to use property rights in market institutions to conserve other resources. Uh, and fortunately, in the 40 or 50 years since, we've made a lot of progress in figuring out how to do that. But his understanding was, was that property rights, where they can be applied and enforced, are a tremendously powerful conservation tool. Do you have an example where just issuing property rights has helped sort of reverse the trend on an endangered species or in some sort of environmental we, issue? We've seen lots of examples. I mean, if you think about the American bison, they're now in every state in the country. Uh, the turn of the last century, they were close to extinction. Had it not been for uh, a few idiosyncratic ranchers and some conservationists, uh, they would not have been conserved. Uh, as best we can tell, uh, all the bison in the United States today are derived from what were effectively private stock. Uh, we see individuals like Rosalie Edge in Pennsylvania who purchased and posted Hawk Mountain as a raptor preserve at a time when people thought it was the, your patriotic duty to take target practice uh, on, on hawks and the like. Uh, we've seen examples today with fisheries where the adoption of property rights-based management regimes have been far more effective than traditional regulation because they give mem uh, fishers a stake in the underlying resource, they give them more control over how they use that resource, and as a result, they create really powerful incentives to conserve that resource and ensure that it's not only something we can use today, but also something we can use tomorrow. It sounds like markets do a pretty good job in dealing with environmental problems. Why do you think that the public in general hasn't really heard this lesson before? Well, a couple things. I mean, one is there are lots of environmental problems that, in the absence of property rights, can be exacerbated by increased economic activity. Uh, if there's a stream that's unprotected and there's a factory on that stream that just dumps its gunk into that stream, the more the factory produces, the more stuff it, it might be dumping into that stream, especially if it hasn't figured out a way to use its resources more efficiently. So in that sense, people sometimes see um, economic growth as something that's always consuming more and not seeing uh, how it serves to, to conserve resources. I think also um, the environmental movement kind of came of age at a time when some of these ideas were not uh, as, as widely shared, not as broadly understood. Um, the, the environmental movement uh, that as it came of age in the late 60s really was a progressive movement that was very skeptical of markets generally, of corporations generally, and so there wasn't as much interest at the time in exploring how to take market institutions that do so well at providing other things and figuring out how they can be utilized uh, better to, to uh, provide environmental benefits as well. If there was one takeaway of how we can be better stewards of the environment and 
meshing that with our economics, what would that be? Well, I think one good way to think about it is generally when we look around the world, we see that our backyards and our homes generally are taken care of pretty well. Uh, it's our parks and our public streets and the like that tend to be a mess. Uh, too often, the political response is to say, well, we should then nationalize our, our homes and yards. The, the reality is that we should find ways through property rights or other institutions to find, make people think about what are often public spaces as things like their yards, things that they have responsibility for, things that they care for and have the ability to be stewards of. That really is the path towards greater conservation and providing the degree of environmental protection that people want. Well, Professor Allard, thank you for this insight. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you.